Hello, everybody. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions from uh, you guys or my viewers uh, about my battery holder that I use in my uh, battery testing videos right here. This is it. And basically what you guys want to know is, hey, where can I get one of those? It looks really handy. Well, it is really handy, but unfortunately you just can't buy these off the shelf. Uh, you have to actually uh, build it yourself. Fortunately, that's not a hard thing to do with a few simple tools. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do on this video. And what you need to do to build this, first thing you need uh, to build this is the actual uh, unit itself. And what that is, is one of these. This is a universal battery charger. Uh, you can get one of these from Amazon for about five bucks. I'm going to put the, a link to it in the video description below to this one. So you can get the same one that uh, I got. And I'm going to modify this and turn it into this. And uh, like I said, this is really handy. Uh, I use this to uh, plug into my uh, AccuCell 6, uh, this baby right here uh, from Turnigy, or my other LiPro charger, which is uh, a uh, IMAX B6. And uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to build this. So here's my current battery holder that you see in my videos. And uh, it works great, and, but it's been through a lot of modifications, as you can see. Uh, through the ages as I've used it and uh, the biggest one that I've recently done is uh, I've done away with these uh, using these two in uh, basically internally connected wires with the alligator clips uh, I found that they added noise and a point of resistance and basically made the circuit a lot less reliable uh, than what uh, you know my current modification is which is taking the banana plugs that you see here and uh, that those plug right into the the uh, lipro charger and taking the leads from those and soldering them straight to the contact tabs on the actual charger itself as you can see here and uh, that makes it a much more reliable circuit uh, internally you see that there's a spring here and a rail and when you're running uh, electricity through that as well as alligator clips and stuff basically you get a, a point where you can you know have different variable uh, you know noise and and uh, what do you call it resistance and it becomes a lot less uh, uh, reliable than just putting the leads straight onto the tabs as you can see uh, I, I've done there so uh, yours is going to look like uh, this one without these uh, two alligator clips sticking out of the side of it and uh, you know first thing we need to do is we need to disable the internal uh, charging circuit on this thing because when you send electricity through these two uh, terminals you're also sending electricity through the charge circuit which will uh, you know interfere with uh, getting a proper result on your uh, uh, test or your discharge uh, readings because you'll also be feeding energy into that uh, charge uh, circuit so we're going to take this apart and what you're going to need is a, a Phillips zero this is a Jewelers uh, Phillips screwdriver and it's a zero and we're going to take this screw off here and there's two more underneath this sticker that we need to take off so i'm just start by taking this easy one off here well they're all easy um, so take that one off like that and uh, then we got to peel this sticker off of here so i'm just going to put my little knife underneath it there and peel the sticker off there we go and you can see there that there's two more screws under that uh, sticker so take those off And we can see it. There we go. And uh, magnetic screwdrivers are really handy, as you can see. I'll take the last one out here. That's it. Uh, and then at this point, the case will just come apart. So there we go. We'll take the case apart. And uh, you can see that the uh, plug portion there that stays in it just no problem at all and you can leave that there if you wish and uh, there's the uh, charge circuit board and uh, it's a one-sided uh, circuit board and basically what we need to do is uh, isolate the positive lead which is I believe yes this uh, hole right here and you can see it if I pull this out pull the circuit out it comes apart quite easily and uh, well we're going to go, you don't have to take it totally apart, but you can see the uh, positive uh, tab here and that it's connected here uh, through the board. Okay, what we need to do is we need to um, take the trace here that, that goes to that tab. Let me zoom in on it. There we go. And basically, we need to 
uh, isolate it from this circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the trace here, right there, and I'm going to see what's uh, attached here, which I think is a capacitor or something. Uh, no, it's a, yeah, it's a capacitor right there. It needs to be uh, taken off the circuit as well. So we're going to do that. Uh, uh, and at that point, what that will do is it isolate the, the whole circuit. Uh, sorry, the positive lead from the circuit, which breaks the circuit. And uh, that should be all we need to do from that point on. So let's do that. So I'm going to use a sharp knife here and cut this trace right at this point. Let me uh, zoom that in a little further. And basically, I'm just going to cut that trace right there. Again, you're destroying the circuit. It doesn't matter. You don't ever want to use it anyway. So, cut the trace. That should do it. I'm going to test to make sure that I cut all the way through there. I'm pretty sure I did. And uh, well, I'm going to use a continuity tester from this side to that side to see that there's nothing there. And then I'm going to, you know, basically I'm going to cut uh, that capacity uh, lead right there off. Uh, so basically turn it over so you can see. There's the capacitor right there. And the lead that has to go off is right there. I've got my uh, meter here. It has an audible continuity tester and what it does is basically uh, tells me if I have an open or a closed circuit and what I want to test is make sure that uh, the trace I cut isn't actually uh, transmitting any more power to the circuit anymore and the way you test that is to see if it's uh, uh, an open or closed circuit. It should be an open circuit so uh, you know basically how the continuity tester is when it's a closed circuit it beeps and if it's an open circuit it doesn't so let's zoom in on that and you can see here that the trace goes from here over to the third uh, uh, little wire here so it should be a uh, open circuit there and if it is open it will not make a sound and if it's closed it will make a sound and there we go we have no continuity there so that trace is cut correctly uh, if it wasn't it would make noise like this okay so as you can see that trace here is cut correctly so it no longer will transfer power to this uh, positive uh, terminal on the charger the next thing we need to do is get rid of this capacitor right here uh, which is also connected to that positive terminal right there right so we need to get rid of that capacitor there and that isolates this part of the circuit uh, by itself and therefore it no longer transfers electricity anywhere uh, other than to itself so I'm going to uh, cut that capacitor out of there using a pair of wire cutters and I'll show you that when I'm done and there we go uh, I've cut it, the capacitor right out of there uh, you can see the what's remaining of the terminals here move them out of the way uh, that's where the capacitor used to be no longer is there. Now, if you don't have a pair of wire cutters, uh, a pair of scissors will do. Uh, you could just cut the, the uh, leads underneath it off. So at this point, that uh, positive uh, lead or, or uh, arm on the battery charger is now completely isolated. And uh, the circuit is now dead. It will, you know, you can put power into it, but uh, it won't do anything because it's not a complete circuit. Now, you could uh, take the negative terminal off that bottom rail if you wish, but it's not necessary. It's actually isolated at this point. You can leave it alone. Just put it back together and uh, we're going to continue on uh, beyond this point. At this point, the actual circuit has been disabled. So uh, this rail down here is a bit of a trick. I want to get it correctly yeah. positioned like so. Then we put the circuit on top of it. You heard that, right? So it has to go back in that direction until that little tab here is being held on on that notch right there. So then we put this back on. It's a bit of a trick. Through the put the positive terminal through the slot there. Carefully push it down 
like so. And there we go. The circuit is now back into the board. Next thing we're going to do is put the back back onto this in the correct fashion. Like so. Put the three screws back in and then we're going to solder our leads to it. Then we'll be done. We'll test it out. And don't over tighten these screws. You're, you're screwing into plastic. If you over tighten them, they'll just strip and they'll be useless. I suspect that one's already been over tightened. There we go. And last is the one in between the plug there. Once we're done with it, we'll solder the leads onto it. There's the charge unit back together. Functioning just fine. The slider is the only thing you really need to worry about. And uh, there's our positive lead terminal there, no problem at all. Ready to go. So next we're going to solder the wires onto these terminals and then test out the circuit. Here we have our banana clip uh, leads and uh, we've got uh, an insulated end here that we need to strip a, 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 a section of wire off. I'm going to do about, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch uh, or, you know, I don't know, three, four millimeters of uh, uh, insulation off the end. Uh, you're going to strip it around using a knife and then uh, we're going to tin the ends. In other words, we're going to put some solder on the ends to make them nice and uh, basically uh, solid and, uh, you know, uh, allow them to be a good connecting point to the uh, positive and negative terminals on that battery uh, holder. So there's the two wires stripped. Uh, that's all you need off there. It's probably too much, but you always cut the excess off if you don't, uh, if you want to. Uh, basically, they're stripped here. Next, we're going to do is put some solder on them, and uh, basically, what it's called tinning, and that's going to allow the solder to soak right into the wire, and then we're going to let it cool. So here's a closer look at the tinning process. What I do is I heat up the wire and then I put the solder on to the wire. I'll let the wire melt the solder. And uh, use lots of solder, it doesn't hurt. And the solder will soak into the wire and then it'll make it nice and stiff and uh, very conductive. There we go. Just like that. And you can see what a nice coating of uh, solder it has all the way through it. Next, we're going to put these onto the actual uh, holder itself. So I'm going to put the red wire into the, onto the positive lead and I'm going to solder it right around down here. So that uh, keeps the wire out of the way from the battery and allows the battery to make contact with that surface without any issue at all. So uh, I'm just going to place it right around there and solder it down into that metal. Okay, I've got lots of solder on my soldering iron and I'm just going to put it in right down there. And I'm melting the plastic a little bit there, but I don't really care about that. It won't affect anything, really. There we go. There we go. We got contact on that. Not going anywhere. Nice and solid. I'm going to put some more solder on there. Why not? And I might slide the wire down a little bit more too because I want it to be out of the way from the battery contacts. You can see the three little nubs there. Uh, they're there for a reason. They make contact with the battery. So that wire may be in the way at that point right there. There you go, much better. Near the bottom, 
of that tab and hopefully that'll be out of the way of the battery when we're loading it up but we're going to test that later next we're going to put the uh, negative lead and i'm going to attach it to the back of that tab right there i'm going to put some solder on that right there As the old adage says, if you got lots, use lots. There we go. Nice little amount there. And then we just put the negative lead right there. Saw it right on there. There we are. She's solid on there. There you go. So we've got the negative lead on the on the uh, on there. We got the positive down there. Next, we're going to test the fit with the battery. See, so make sure we're okay. So um, there is what we got, just like that. So slide it open and put a battery in there. So there's our completed battery holder. Uh, next thing to do is test it out, make sure that's working okay. Uh, so I'm going to use a whole bunch of different cells. I've got a AAA here. Uh, my meter over here as you can see and I'm just going to test the voltage prior to putting it in keep it all together here the cell is at 1.369 1.368 there we go let's put it in the holder there we go and as you can see it holds holds it nicely let's test and see what we got now 1.368 perfect exactly what we had in the cell before um, so it's working on a double a, on a triple a let's try a double a let's test it out first see what we got for a voltage one point three see why you want a holder right one point three four seven so let's put it in the holder there we go just like that 1.347 exactly correct so it's working on a, a double a this is what i like about these is that it's it, it'll fit you know different size uh, cells really nicely let's try the efest uh, 3000 milliamp hour uh, cell let's try that one out and we have 4.12 volts on it Let's test it outside of the holder, make sure that it's 4.12 volts. There you go, 4.12 volts. So that holder's working just fine. And uh, for the, the, the big test, I'm gonna uh, put a 26, uh, uh, 650 in there. And uh, this is uh, one of those uh, big, big cells uh, that uh, I got ripped off on eBay with. But uh, you know, hey, you learn, uh, but this one is, uh, still working okay and what do we get 4.13 volts on it and I can test this one's so big I can test it right in the holder 4.13 volts so this uh, battery holder is working perfectly just like I uh, you know like the one I, I use in my videos in fact this is going to be the one I use in my videos because uh, this one's seen better days and uh, you know this one is working perfectly so at this point, we're ready to plug it into our, our uh, charger, uh, in this case, the AccuCell 6 um, from Turnigy. Again, I'll put uh, links to all this stuff in the video description below. So if you want to find them on Amazon, just uh, go to the video description and you'll get them. Uh, so let's plug it in here, positive to positive, negative to negative. And at this point, we can begin uh, either charging or discharging or testing or whatever you're going to do with this uh, battery holder we just built so let's just start it up and there we go working perfectly that's it for my video on how to build a battery holder if you like this video and it helped you out in some way do me a big favor and click on the like button here in the bottom right hand corner and give me a thumbs up also somewhere on this screen there'll be a picture of me and uh, if you wish to see further videos from me in the future, just click on that picture and it will subscribe you to my channel. And that way you'll get a notification whenever I make a new video. And 
then you can watch it. Um, once again, like always, I want to thank you for watching and for your time.